The area between Washington and Donaldson that came to about Livingston Avenue um, was an area where you saw a lot of the immigrants come in. It started in roughly the late 1880s, 90s. And there was a large Jewish community there. There was a, a Jewish baker. There was a Jewish delicatessen. There was a Jewish butcher. On the corner here of Ann and uh, Livingston, there was what I'd call a variety store now. And the only thing I remember about it is we could sneak down if we ever got a penny and you could get a popsicle. So it had Russians, it had Hungarians, it was Lithuanians, people from Latvia. So there were multiple religions, uh, African-Americans, whites uh, were all over the neighborhood. I don't remember any conflicts. It was a very warm neighborhood. You had a Jewish um, ritual slaughterer there. People would take their chickens and he would say a prayer and slaughter their chickens. Yeah, so you, that was the center of Jewish life at the time. Well, if we concentrate on the South Side, uh, it's pretty easy to determine that there must have been at least two dozen languages spoken. Italians, Croatians, and other Eastern Europeans found work in the South Side factories. And a community of Hungarians especially thrived, establishing their own bank and churches, St. Ladislaus for Catholics, and a reformed congregation for Protestants. <laughs> This building, or house it seems, is where the Columbus Hungarian Reformed Church was first established in 1906. We didn't speak English at home. If you, if you didn't speak Hungarian, you didn't eat. <laughs> With so many languages on the South Side, there were misunderstandings. Lou Varga's grandfather at Buckeye Steel spoke only Hungarian. So they did this time and motion study involving the shoveling of coal into the furnace. They lined up all the men and everybody took their turn. My grandfather took this on as competition. So he started to shovel faster than anybody and naturally his co-workers weren't really happy with him because that would be the mark to hit from now on. Hungarians are not Slavic people. They are not Slovenian, they're not Slovakian, they are not Russian, they're not Polish. Um, they are Magyar people and Magyar people originated in Central Asia. The other languages that are related to Hungarian are um, Finnish, Estonian, and one dialect of Korean. Uh, Hungarian is a very poetic language. You can say Edes uh, Anyam, which means sweet mother. You could say mother, but Edes Anyam is, is more uh, an endearment. Uh, we have a uh, like a welcome, too, that says, Isten Hoslot. God brought you. This is a picture of my dad in his Hungarian uh, soldier uniform. He was a soldier in Hungary. The troubles in Hungary from the 1850s forward resulted in about four different migrations, emigrations to the United States. So. It's a very rich past, and I think it's that turbulence and that language that maybe characterize Hungarians as being a little different than some ethnic groups. The Hungarians on the South Side were among the customers at The Foreign Grocery, one of the Parsons Avenue businesses that catered to immigrants. There was one employee who spoke 11 languages, and it was generally required to speak at least six, if not eight, if you were an employee. You could buy everything from paprika to passage for a loved one. You could, in effect, purchase a steamship ticket that would be transferred to someone in Central Europe, presumably in Hungary or, or Poland, and they could come over on the ticket you purchased here. More immigrants translated into more opportunities for entrepreneurs on the relatively undeveloped South Side. That was where money was, and the place was crowded with immigrants. So one immigrant found was comfortable with others. You can make money. Heschel Schottenstein was a peddler in Lithuania who made his way to Columbus. 
his family would follow. If you've seen Fiddler on the Roof, that's exactly probably what it was. One of Heschel's sons, Ephraim, started small on Parsons Avenue, but the store bearing the family's name would grow. Schottensteins grew from this concept of peddling, a quick sell, nothing fancy. They came up with the concept of what you call of uh, buying goods, not from middlemen, but from the factory. They bought goods that were damaged or they bought goods that for some reason or the other, they could buy at a lower price, see? And they got very good items and they sold them cheaper and people recognize this. This is the street I grew up on. It's Hidman Avenue. It means family, it means uh, rich ethnic culture, uh, mine being Hungarian. My mother was uh, a member of a Hungarian dramatics club. Uh, they recorded music, they acted out plays, all in Hungarian costume and dialogue as well. This is Hungarian village, but my friends were Lombardis, Persichettis, Icabonis, Delacandros. So we had, you know, a lot of ethnicity and and from that, we, we didn't see ourselves any different from any other neighborhood in Columbus, and we probably weren't. One of the best parts of Hungarian Village is the fact that this church, uh, since the 70s, has been trying to promote both the culture, keep alive the stories, and really fill this vital part, along with the Civic Association. They're all working together. We have uh, what they call a soup and learn. We have a program about Hungary or, or people that tell about their experiences. Well, if you'll look, look at most of these envelopes, you'll see Coca, Florida, uh, Pataskala, and all over the United States. Well, they come. Every time we have food, they come. Especially cabbage rolls. The basement of the Hungarian Reformed Church is full and the lines are long, if only for a Saturday afternoon, as Hungarians have returned to the South Side to celebrate their heritage. And when my father passed away, he was the last living Rezus. My uh, wife and I decided we would come here to keep the Rezus legacy going as long as we could. The Hungarians of Columbus, some still live in the neighborhood. Some have moved away. A lot of them have intermarried. Are you the last Hungarian here? Far as I know, with the exception of Dan Varga, who moved in about four, do four doors over, uh, he's the chef at the Explorers Club. The Hungarians are nearly gone, but there are still reasons to fly their flag. Well, to kind of honor uh, the folks who lived here originally and then to give an identity to the neighborhood. As the city gets bigger, we want to try to make some sense of that, and we can do that by staking out a territory and, and calling it our own. One of the other reasons that this community, I think, is very special is that if you're a historian, uh, it's a living history place. To be in this shoe shop is like the highlight of my life. It's not until you really get into a place and you see, oh my God, this is where these men worked, and this is the smell of the shoe shop, and this is where veterans, you know, who brought their boots in after Vietnam to be resold, and you know, this is where little kids came in and the pop machine. That's what really makes the locale special. Right now, I'm standing behind my father and uncle's workbench in the Nagy Brothers Shoe Repair. And um, it's a very special place for me because I grew up here. Mostly just being here with dad and just, just the characters and the different people would come in to get their shoe repair and watching his interaction with them and, you know, and he was such a great guy. You know, I think you can get history out of books, you can get it out of city directories and you can look up census records, but unless you um, 
don't start talking to people. It just doesn't make sense. And what's really wonderful about Columbus is everybody's got a story. And I know that's probably true in every community, but there's something about Columbus where people open up to you and you start making connections. And I would hope to think there's a level of trust that starts and then people start telling you family stories and opening up. And, and that's what makes the difference. That's, that's when you start to really understand a community. When did the Hungarians come in and the Italians leave? And what were the African-Americans? Where did they live? And that's what really makes history rich.